dark matter encompasses an enormous percentage of the universe. 25% of the universe. So it's roughly speaking, about 5% of the universe is normal matter. Did you know that all the atoms and light in the universe together make up less than 5% of the cosmos? The remaining components consist of dark matter and dark energy, which, although imperceptible, exert significant influence over the universe's structure and evolution. But what is dark matter? Join us as we delve deep into the mysteries of dark matter and uncover the hidden truths that continue to elude scientists. Scientists have estimated dark matter to account for about 27% of the universe's composition, which is not by any means a trivial percentage. And to understand what dark matter is, we first need to understand normal matter. Normal matter is all and any matter we interact with in our daily lives. As scientists like to put it, normal matter is baryonic matter which is a fancy term to describe the atom and all the matter around us. So, inversely, dark matter is not baryonic matter, meaning it's not made of baryons that constitute normal matter. Additionally, dark matter does not interact with light the way normal matter does, which makes using light, or more accurately, all of the electromagnetic field to detect it an impossible task. Remember that we only see something because light reflects off its surface into our eyes or a detector. So since dark matter doesn't interact with light via reflection, it is basically invisible to us. It's important to note here that we should not confuse dark matter with black holes, because even though black holes are dark, they do interact with light by absorbing it. So we've told you what dark matter isn't, but then what is it? Well, that's a very good question to which scientists have absolutely no certain answer. However, scientists do have some speculations. They believe that dark matter might be made of unknown minute particles, different from the ones in normal matter, such as particles called WIMPs, WIMPs or axions. To confirm these ideas, scientists need more information, which they can get by using huge machines called particle colliders, like the Large Hadron Collider at CERN. These colliders smash tiny particles together at very high speeds, which helps scientists gather information about them. However, even though we lack a complete understanding of what dark matter is, can we still detect its presence? The answer is maybe as long as we don't rely solely on the reflection of light for this purpose dark matter despite being invisible interacts with something equally significant gravity the interaction hinges on the fact that dark matter possesses mass which is the very property responsible for gravity's effect so by measuring how dark matter's gravity affects ordinary matter we can discern its existence this gravitational influence also extends to light, as light undergoes bending in the presence of high mass concentrations, a phenomenon referred to as gravitational lensing. Therefore, we can observe the degree of light bending in proportion to the mass causing the distortion. If the observed mass isn't sufficient to induce such bending, it serves as evidence that additional unseen matter, or in other words, dark matter, is at play. By now you must be wondering about the genesis of dark matter and why we bother studying it. Let's make a comparison with our own solar system. You'll notice that as the distance from the Sun increases, the planet's orbital speed around the Sun decreases, which makes sense because Neptune, for example, is under less gravitational force than, say, Mercury. From Newtonian gravitational laws, we would expect the same behavior from matter, stars and dust, orbiting galaxies and galaxy clusters. But we don't. Rather, observational data shows that orbital speeds of matter further out from galaxies are actually constant and independent from the distance, which must mean that a bigger undetected amount of matter is present. Dark matter. Dark matter plays a crucial role in the current models of cosmology, helping to explain the observed large-scale structure of the universe 
background radiation and the expansion rate of the universe. Understanding dark matter is essential for refining and validating these models. And because of its importance to how we understand the universe, astronomers have been using various methods to better understand dark matter. One method entails using intracluster light, also known as ICL, as a dark matter tracer to try and make out a map of dark matter. Intracluster light, or ICL, is the light that results from interactions between galaxies in a galaxy cluster. And this light, much like light from gravitational lensing, is gravitationally affected by dark matter. So in the process of detecting this light, we also detect the effect of dark matter and hence its location inside the galaxy cluster. Using this technique, astronomers can map an accurate image of dark matter. But for this work, we need high sensitivity detectors. And that's where space telescopes like the Hubble Space Telescope and James Webb Space Telescope come in. Astronomers have used this technique with the Hubble Space Telescope before and got the first image of ICL back in 2018, when Hubble imaged the galaxy cluster Abel S1063. More recent and accurate efforts followed with the James Webb Space Telescope. Back in December 2022, two astronomers published an academic letter in the American Astronomical Society journal where they discussed how they used the JWST early release observations to study the ICL of the galaxy cluster SMAX 7327. They analyzed and calibrated the images to map out the ICL and determine dark matter distribution as well as accurately observe different features of ICL. Additionally, and thanks to JWST's high resolution, the two astronomers were able to categorize which light is indeed a product of ICL and which is not, even though JWST is one of the most sophisticated space telescopes right now. The quest for more understanding of dark matter doesn't end with it. Just last July, the European Space Agency launched the Euclid Telescope into space. The telescope's mission is to observe billions of galaxies as far as 10 billion light-years away for six years. This will help astronomers get a better and more advanced 3D image of dark matter distribution. And indeed, Euclid did deliver its first five images of the universe back in November. However, it is still too early to draw any conclusions about dark matter from these images. Additionally, the European Space Agency has approved a new mission called Arrakis to launch a satellite into space in 2030. The acronym stands for the analysis of resolved remnants of accreted galaxies as a key instrument for HALO surveys. And just like the title says, Arrakis will observe the outer rims of 75 galaxies much like our own Milky Way. It will look at every galaxy for a lengthy 150 hours, giving astronomers a detailed representation of the galaxy's halo structure where dark matter tends to concentrate. Studying dark matter is vital as it enhances our understanding of the universe's structure, evolution and fundamental physics, playing a key role in our pursuit to uncover cosmic mysteries.